looking at postural asymmetry as a double-edged sword. Addressing it can be helpful, but on the other hand, it can totally lead to obsession and it can totally lead you to an increased state of stress, which paradoxically can actually make the asymmetry worse. If you've been subscribed to this channel for a while, you'll know that I used to post a ton about postural asymmetry and different postural presentations and exercise ideas that you could use to address or fix them. But in recent years, I almost completely stopped posting about asymmetry with a few exceptions. And there's a really good reason for this, which we're gonna talk about in today's video. So we're gonna keep this one a little bit more conversational, talk about what postural asymmetry is, why it happens, what you can do to address it, and why you might wanna reconsider trying to fix it. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so to begin here, let's go back to 2020 when I started this channel. So it's a little older than that, but 2020 is when I really started posting more about postural asymmetry. And the reason for that was I had gone from my rock bottom, 10 years in chronic pain, debilitating symptoms, absolute worst, to better, but still not all that good. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. And so at that point, the bridge from rock bottom to better, but still, by no definition, doing great, I was using approaches that addressed postural asymmetry. And the reason that this is important to me is because I've been a lifelong musician, asymmetry is part of that, and after I tweaked my neck, which kicked off all my chronic symptoms, I noticed that there was this radical change in the way that my body was positioning itself and the way that I felt between the different sides of my body and the coordination between the different sides of my body. So. It was natural to me to kind of cling on to this idea of postural asymmetry. And then when I started implementing some of the approaches and felt a benefit, it confirmed this suspicion that there was an issue with postural asymmetry. And it gave me this certainty that I was just so hungry for. It was satisfying that hunger. It was scratching that itch, whatever analogy you want to use. Because I was making this progress from rock bottom to clearly doing better, I felt extremely emboldened to share what I felt was secret information with people that were struggling with the same thing. And so I started this YouTube channel and started talking about the different presentations of postural asymmetry that I was seeing in some of my patients, as well as myself. So I wasn't making a lot of videos, but the ones that I was making came from specific case studies, what I was observing, what I was actually doing, and the energy behind it was I really want to help, and this is definitely gonna help you. And I think, as an audience, people can feel that. And of course, my channel did really, really well in the beginning. Uh, it started to kind of blow up in a, in a small way, and that's how I started my online business, which was great. But then something strange happened, and I started reading the comments section of the YouTube videos. And at first, it felt really good to get a lot of these comments, people sharing their experiences, but then I started to see this common thread of an energy that looked a lot like neuroticism, a lot like anxiety, a lot like obsession. And I started looking at that almost like a mirror and thinking, is that what I'm doing? Well, the truth was that right before I started making this channel, even though I was doing better, I was wearing a heart rate monitor to work, measuring my HRV obsessively, my step counts, adjusting my posture all day long, almost like a tick, right? Constantly obsessed about the different obsessions or the different sensations in my body. And so looking back on it, if I had a video camera, it was obvious that, again, I was doing better, but I wasn't doing great. It wasn't a level of function that I would want for anyone else. And so seeing these people in the comment section, beginning to work with online clients who were, again, a mirror to what was going on with me, I started seeing that looking at postural asymmetry is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, yes, asymmetry can be present and it can get worse after an injury or a stressful time and addressing it can be helpful. But on the other hand, if taken too far, especially with a certain psychological profile and a certain range of experiences, it can totally lead to obsession and it can totally lead you to an increased state of stress, which paradoxically can actually make the asymmetry worse. We're gonna cover that now in just a second. All right, so to kind of have a framework here first, let's talk about what asymmetry is. If we think about postural asymmetry, some of us are just gonna have a normal difference of how we move between the sides. 
And that makes sense. We're all asymmetrical. And the way I want you to think about this is options, right? So for example, I can bend my head to the right, I can bend my head to the left. Those are two options. Asymmetry just means I'm gonna bias one of those options more than another. Now, some of this is just natural, but it also can have to do with the movements we do repetitively. So I grew up playing music for years and years and years, thousands and thousands of hours, always in asymmetrical positions, or our injury history, right? So we hurt something and then the body subconsciously avoids it. Oftentimes, especially in chronic pain, instead of avoiding it short-term, which is adaptive, we start avoiding it long-term, which is not as adaptive. And even if we start avoiding it a little bit, because we haven't really fully rehabbed that area, that can cause compensations elsewhere, where the body finds creative ways to distribute load across that system. And so we use other strategies or other segments to be able to make up that movement. And this is actually smart from the perspective of the body, because it allows us to avoid that area that the brain is perceiving as being threatening, and it allows us to continue to accomplish our tasks. Now, the cost of this can sometimes be that we have discomfort in those areas that are compensating. And so what I want you to do is zoom out here, and instead of looking at posture as a position, I want you to look at it as a response, right? A response to natural asymmetry, which I think is the smallest factor, a response to the movements that we do repetitively, and a response to our injury history. So we need to create conditions that allow the body to have a different response. We're not trying to work on the postural asymmetry directly because it's not that just being in one posture is what leads to asymmetry. It's also doing tasks repetitively and it's also our injury history. Now there's a little problem here. Once we have found ourselves in a particular pattern over and over and over again, the brain recognizes that this is a reliable option. This is a reliable pattern. And what can happen here, especially if stress is high relative to our overall capacity, the brain can start to select that pattern across multiple contexts. And next thing we know, our body is kind of stuck in one pattern or position. And this is where if you come across someone who says, hey, there's one pattern out there and this is how you fix it and this is how you test it, here you go. You are so prone to latching onto that narrative because you feel stuck, you're at rock bottom, you know asymmetry is playing a role in, in some way. And so if someone sells you, hey, let's address the asymmetry directly, you go, okay, take my money, right? The problem is it just doesn't work. So this begs the question, what does work? And all we have to really do is look at creating the conditions that allow the body to have a better response. So first of all, we need to be able to identify which options are we biasing? And then we literally just need to work on developing movements where we can bias the opposite options. Now we also have that reliability issue where the body is selecting that pattern because it's highly reliable. We need to develop capacity to give the brain more options that are also reliable. So it's not enough to just do low level drills where you experience the opposite position of the body, but it's also making sure that the brain knows when duress comes in, when there's higher levels of stress, higher levels of demand, we can use those other options as well. So some of the floor-based respiration stuff, mobility stuff, that's a great starting point, but usually the solution is gonna look more around progressive strengthening and progressive training with a good combination of both symmetrical and asymmetrical activities. We don't wanna just obsess over, oh my God, I only have to do one side or I have to do the other because nine times out of 10, we're getting it wrong on some level or we're making some incorrect assumption. Even the people like me who literally obsess about this stuff because it's their job all the time, we can still get it wrong in terms of what we wanna do. Whenever I've tried to be super, super, we're doing this one little thing on one side and we're neglecting the other, I've totally got worse outcomes Then we're just gonna do both sides. We're gonna see how we respond across all of those exposures to both sides. We might start cueing the sides a little bit differently. We might see that we respond to loading a little bit differently on those sides, but we're not gonna avoid, because again, the avoiding feeds the obsession. The obsession can feed the stress when we're in increased levels of stress, especially psychologically, the brain is not in a good spot to make new predictions and it relies on the old predictions. It says, what pattern can I use right now that's more reliable? 
So a couple of questions for you to get started with. First of all, ask yourself, am I obsessing about this stuff? Do I believe that there is one universal pattern that I need to uh, get into? Do I believe that this can be something that's fixed right away just based on addressing the posture itself? The answer is yes to those. Start to ask yourself, why is it that I think that? And a lot of times that comes down to the media you're consuming or a high need for certainty. Start to process the underlying emotion and anxiety that's associated with that, you're gonna be able to break that pattern a lot easier. Then you wanna to start to ask yourself, do I have the overall capacity in my body to be able to handle stress? What are those options that I'm missing and how can I create a program that allows me to bolster overall capacity, but also capacity with those different movement options that are opposite of what your usual go-to options are. Now. One last thing, if you are constantly monitoring the position of your body as a result, you're going to be very, very discouraged along the way. What I would recommend is, as you start going through that comprehensive training process, you want to start to look at where is the difference and how I'm moving between sides, both qualitatively and especially quantitatively, and start tracking that. Because if you can see those moving in the right directions, then you can stay motivated enough to understand the postural change is probably something that's going to happen later, if at all. And that is just the harsh truth. So with all that said, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below in the comments. I wanna get into a little bit more of a conversational style on this channel in my upcoming videos. So thanks for watching and until next time, peace.